Yeah, you uh, okay, I want to step back a little bit for the debate that you, that you started earlier with your question to, to Sam to some extent. Um, and actually something you said, Sam, now allows me to bring it back, which is I'm kind of amused. The basic point that you make very cogently is that we have this unusual and un, totally non-rational acceptance of religious sensibility, especially when those sensibilities are, are ludicrous. Mm. And, and, and the, the, the easy example is, is in, in this case, maybe Islam, as, uh, or you, you can pick whatever, or the Old Testament. But you're much more um, tolerant in your statement, of course, of Buddhism. You talked about the, the Buddhist who, who, who had this compassion, but compassion was based on nonsense. It's based on reincarnation. Well, but, it's, but, it's actually, but, I, mean, I can unpack that, but... Yeah, but, yeah. but okay, but the point is, it's clear to me that you're much more willing to, in some sense, be um, respectful of a nonsensical religious belief which, is, which leads to a positive result, perhaps. And, and yeah, I know, I want you to comment on that. I'm sure you'll not agree with that statement, but I want you to elaborate on it. But, but, but I think what, what that reflects is this question that you were asking earlier, which is the a priori um, attack on, on religious faith in general, or in fact, not religious faith, but the but faith in things which you cannot, which for which you have no evidence whatsoever, as a general statement that that is a bad thing, that making that attack is 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 uh, perhaps not uh, empirically advised, nor is it nor is it sensible to do. And I, and I have to say, as an empirical fact. I've evolved in my, in, my, in my own discussions. If I talked here five years ago, it would have sounded much more uh, like Steve or you or, or Richard, perhaps. In debating people on, on, on the issue of evolution around the country, I suddenly got hit with realizing how offensive how, and, and how illogical the statements that, that were being applied from what I was saying was, was, was being received. By, by the people I was talking to. In particular, I remember debating, I forget the guy's name, who's head of the Intelligent Design Network in Kansas. That old fella, he's a nice old guy. Do you know, remember his name? Anyway, um, and he trotted out this letter from 50 Nobel laureates trying to defend evolution. They said, there's no evidence for design and purpose in the universe. And then the next sentence says, there is no design and purpose in the universe. And he said, see, these people are trying to preach atheism. And I thought, that, that's the worst thing they can be doing because, in fact, that has nothing to do with evolution because evolution has nothing to do with the design and purpose of the universe. It has to do with the d development of diversity of species on Earth through natural selection. And so that, so that by going out and immediately attacking the notion that believing things without any evidence is empirically bad or, or is, is, just, is, just, is just not acceptable, uh, that we are stepping beyond our role as, as, as scientists and, and inevitably it becomes emotional. You, you don't mind, you wouldn't preach as much against Buddhism as you would against Islam because you don't like, you like, like Islam less than you like Buddhism. And no, so, you're right. Well, so anyway, those are the things I, want, I wanted to provoke both of you, but I think sort of it's a way to bridge between the two of you. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, uh, good question. Uh, it's not that I'm pulling any punches uh, uh, from Buddhism based on some kind of dogmatic affinity with Buddhists or, or having been raised Buddhist. I mean, this is not uh, what's going on. I happen to think that within Buddhism, there's an extraordinarily nuanced and interesting methodology for meditation and some very sophisticated uh, discussion of the nature of consciousness, the possibilities of transforming our moment-to-moment -moment perception of the world that, that link up r rather nicely with what we understand about neuroplasticity and, and the human brain at this moment. Um, if you sit in a room with the Dalai Lama talking to physicists and neuroscientists, you'll see that there is a, uh, for the most part, a very open and unconstrained dialogue going on. But the basic and, premise is nonsense, right? Reincarnation. Well, well, reincarnation, who knows? That may, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I have no, well, no, who knows in the sense that there's no, I mean, there are these spooky stories where, you know, a kid, no, I, 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 I am not, okay. Okay. Well, the, the, you, you, re, re, reincarnation, uh, that you are on firm ground being skeptical of reincarnation. Let me say that, okay? Um, I mean, this is, this is going to take us far afield. I, I have published a few spooky things about telepathy and reincarnation, which amount to not an endorsement of, of these beliefs, but just 
you know, I hear there's all this data. Someone, someone like Dean Radin writes a book about it. Brian Josephson, a Nobel laureate in physics, blurbs it. I don't have the time to do the meta-analyses or the statistical expertise. So, so let's, I'm, I'm awaiting the evidence. Okay. So I, I don't want to talk about reincarnation. It, it may be. All right. No, l let me answer the, the root of your question, which is it really matters what the consequences of these dogmas are. I mean, it's not that all dogma is equally pernicious. And, and the problem with dogma is that there's no, I mean, you can't necessarily predict just how many lives uh, are, are, it's going to cost. And so you, t you take one like this idea that the, the soul enters the zygote at the moment of conception. You know, life starts at the moment of conception. This sounds totally benign. In fact, life affirming. Why not believe this, right? Then we invent something called stem cell research, and we have a president who vetoes federal funding of it because he and millions of other Christians think that, that every three-day-old human embryo uh, has a soul which cannot, uh, has interests which cannot be trumped by the interests of a little girl with full body burns or spinal cord injury or diabetes. And we seem to be at a stalemate in our ethical debate in this culture. And unless we are willing to criticize the dogma at that point, we really are left in a situation where tens of millions of people have conditions that could be remediated potentially by stem cell research, or for which stem cell research is the best uh, game in town uh, as far as generating therapies. And we are not pursuing it aggressively. Um, so this is, this is where dogma begins to be really troubling. And if, if a reincarnation, if certainty, certainty about reincarnation were doing work that I could see anywhere that was an, analogous to the work of martyrdom, I would be telling the Buddhists, you have, I mean, this is, this is uh, until you had evidence, uh, this is pernicious nonsense. This is getting a lot of people killed. Now, it, there are situations in which it may get people killed. I can fully uh, predict what those situations might be, or at least venture a guess. But the, the problem, that's not the problem I'm seeing with Buddhists now. The problem I'm seeing with Buddhists is they, they are entangled with a lot of new age mumbo jumbo that's, that, that makes, it, makes their discourse basically seem unscientific. Well, it seems to me ultimately, hey, I wait, 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 taking my, my microphone, but one last thing. Yeah, but it's not going to go anywhere. Oh. Roger, I have, to take, I have to go to the airport. Can I just make one statement? Yes. Okay. Just want to leave you with one thought. I agree there's lots of nonsense in the world and that science may or may not, though I see no historical evidence that there's any interesting thing science has done for morals yet or ethics or politics or anything else. In fact, I've seen the contrary, but let's suppose there is. And let's suppose that it's a good mission to get rid of the nonsense in the world. This is the problem which you're not facing. How to advance science and reason in a fundamentally irrational world not to wish it to go away, not to believe that by rational argument it will go away, but how to deal with that problem. It is a very, very hard problem. I gotta go. Thank you, Scott. Well, I'm, um, gonna, I'm gonna respond to you as you walk out as well. Yeah, well. Can I just say, can I just say one thing, Roger? Because in response to those applause. Well, apparently, according to the people up there, your microphone's trumping mine at the moment. Okay. So All right, I'm gonna use my advantage. Uh, Rational argument actually does occasionally, uh, I think rather often, change people's minds about God. I mean, I, I am the recipient of thousands upon thousands of emails now uh, from people who used to be fundamentalists who, who got argued out of it. I mean, the, 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 the trying to square their ludicrous beliefs about the world with the consequences of those beliefs and with the, with the testimony of rationality on a hundred fronts has eroded their confidence in those beliefs. And you, know, you wouldn't know this. I mean, we have this kind of shibboleth, which says you can't, what, 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 was, what, what wasn't reasoned into existence can't be reasoned out. The, the truth, I think, is rather much closer to, the, to this, that people are making desperate efforts, rather heroic efforts, every day of their lives to be reasonable, to, to have a coherent worldview. And when those efforts become too costly or too embarrassing, they, you know, dogma loses. And, and I, I can just tell you that there are, there are ministers in, in this country preaching to flocks, ministers who have completely lost their belief but can't figure out what other job to do. And so we're just literally getting up on Sundays, uh, espousing what they now know to be nonsense. Um, and uh, there's every permutation of that. There are fundamentalists who become moderates, moderates who become atheists. Uh, and so it's, it's just not true that people can't be argued out of their beliefs.
Well, I'd like to make a comment. Uh, I'm Alan Gilchrist, vision science, scientist at Rutgers. Um, I think a lot of you know there, there, there was this uh, scientific study done by a team at Hopkins University uh, recently using scientific polling techniques to find out, to estimate how many innocent civilians have been killed in the Iraq war. And these are scientific techniques they're using despite what the president says. And the estimate they came up with was about 600,000. Uh, I was disturbed, especially yesterday and somewhat today. I mean, I love people like, like Richard Dawkins and Sam Harris. They're, they're heroes of mine. But I was a little disturbed by the ease with which people in this group here uh, fell into that same language about Islam and how much worse it is than Christianity. And I, I think we should all be reminded we can have our speculation about what Islam uh, I've heard people not here, but other people talking about how Islam wants to take over the world. They're an evil religion. Well, that may or may not be true. But what's happening on the ground in the Middle East is basically one of Christians killing Muslims. And I think it's very convenient to talk about, you know, what, what a violent religion Islam is. But what's happening on the ground in the Middle East? That's my point. Okay, so... There's a couple of things here. One thing is that we've got, don't forget, there's all tomorrow morning. So, Sam, there's, if there's other things you want to do, we can do that then. Uh, we really need to move. And, and of course, the, the other thing about Buddhism, as I understand it, having actually been in gatherings with the Dalai Lama, is that he always says, if there's anything wrong, we change it. No problem. So if there's, if, there's, if there's an issue, he changes the, he, he changes the, uh, the science, as I understand. If the science can contradicts the religion, my understanding is that he's all in favor of changing it. So.